Thanks for stopping by. I'm so happy you're here. Today we're going to make gluten-free, dairy-free chocolate crinkle cookies. Now before I met Rich, I had no idea what a chocolate crinkle cookie was. And he said they were his favorite cookies from his childhood. And so I made some for him, gluten and dairy-free. And so I got to try it for the first time. It was really quite good. And so I would describe a chocolate crinkle as a chocolate sugar cookie. Wonderful for the holidays, wonderful whenever you're craving some chocolate and sugar. And so we're gonna make those, we're gonna jump right in. It's a very easy recipe. So the first thing is I'm gonna take the sugar and it has quite a bit of sugar. Putting that in the bowl, have some uh, sunflower oil. You can use canola oil if you like. And then I'm gonna mix that up which it's going to be, you're going to see the oil mix with the, the sugar and, and start to clump a little bit. That's perfectly fine. That's what it's supposed to do. And now I'm going to add the vanilla. Mix that in. And then I like to add a, a little bit of espresso powder to give it a more of a, a depth of flavor in the chocolate. Now this recipe originally came from Betty Crocker. I've made it gluten free and now I'm adding the espresso powder. So I've made a few changes, which is what I love to do. The recipes just kind of make them my own. So I'm putting that in and I mix it up again. Okay. And now for the chocolate. So I started with 70%, uh, I think it's 72% cacao chocolate little chips. And I, over a double boiler, I melted it down. I prefer to use the actual chocolate to cocoa powder. I think it just gives it a better flavor. And um, when you're cooking your, your, or melting your chocolate, you have to be very careful. And I'll have the exact instructions in the written recipe. And you'll find a link to that in the description below. So into the sugar mix goes the chocolate. And I have a spatula so I can get everything out of the bowl. Okay, I think I got most of it out. Now I'm going to mix again. And now it's going to start to look like chocolatey sugar. It's really cool. Okay, now I'm gonna add the four eggs one at a time. And it's important that you add one at, a time, one at a time and mix because you don't want the eggs to bind to themselves. You really want them to get distributed in the sugar and chocolate mix we have here. So once I don't see too much egg yolk, it looks like it's distributed, I'm gonna put my second egg in. Okay, as you can see, we are very, very nicely combined. And now it's time to add the dry mix. So in here, I have a flour blend that I created. It's uh, four different flours, a little xanthan gum, some baking powder, and some salt. And I am gonna add this slowly, just a little bit at a time, and then combine. It's gonna start to get really, really thick and more difficult to stir, but it's a good workout. Now I'm going to get my spatula here because I have a lot of flour that's on the side of the bowl and I want to get that mixed in a little better. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to switch to mixing with a spatula. It's working better. Get all this off of here. A little more flour. Okay, I'm going back to the spoon. The spatula outlived its usefulness. Now you could put this in, we use a hand mixer. You could put this in a stand mixer. Um, this is a bit of a workout. I don't mind doing it. So that's why I'm doing it by hand, kind of old school way. Okay, I am very well mixed here. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for three hours. This dough needs to be very, very chilled. So I'm gonna transfer it to a smaller bowl. I needed the bigger bowl to really get in there and mix it. And the thing that makes chocolate crinkles so different from other cookies is we're gonna ball up this dough after three hours, of course, and then roll it in some powdered sugar and bake them. That's what gives the chocolate crinkles that beautiful white outside that's kind of, it's, it's crinkled, they're cracked. That's the hallmark of chocolate crinkles. So I'm gonna, Transfer to a bowl here, 
get it in the refrigerator, and when it's done, we're going to make some cookies. The dough's been chilling in the fridge for about three hours. Now it's time to make some balls, put them in some powdered sugar, and bake up some cookies. Now you can choose between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, kind of around a teaspoon or around a tablespoon. I've gone both ways. Um, I think I like the smaller ones better, so um, I'm going to do the smaller ones. And it's about around a teaspoon. Yeah, I'd call that around a teaspoon. You just kind of make them in the balls, just like meatballs. You put them in the powdered sugar and you don't want to see any of the chocolate. You want it to be completely white and then onto a greased sheet pan. Now, don't worry, you're probably going to get some powdered sugar into your dough here. That's not a problem. It's a messy task, but somebody's got to make cookies. You don't want to set them too close to each other on the pan. They are going to spread a bit. The smaller teaspoon size, you probably can get well, one, two, three, four, about 50, about 12 on a pan. Well, not that's too many, one, two, three. Yeah, about 12 on a pan. <laughs> Doing math here. Uh, sometimes I'll just scoop out a few of these, roll them into balls, drop them in, and then coat them all at one time. And I just can't seem to scoop the same amount all the time, so my cookie's going to be a little bit different sizes, but that's okay. So now I've got my first tray scooped out, so I'm going to go in a 350-degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. So you would think you would go ahead and scoop the next pan while this pan is in the oven, but it only takes a couple minutes to scoop a whole pan, and so that means your dough would be sitting out as balls on the tray for about five to seven minutes, which you don't want because you want your dough to be as cold as possible. So I would put this back in the refrigerator, and then once you've got about three minutes left on your first pan, bring it out and portion out your next pan. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. They look perfect. Oh, look at those. And you can see how they look matte on the top. They don't look wet, so I think they are perfectly wonderful. And I'm going to let them cool for a couple minutes and then get them off the pan onto the cooling rack. The chocolate crinkles are out of the oven and I'm ready to take my first bite. It, it looks really good. Mmm, sugary, chocolatey, delicious. I think Rich is really going to like these. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. The link to the full recipe will be in the description below. Or stop by gfexplorers.com. Or stop by gfexplorers.com where you'll find this and so many other recipes. Also think about checking out our Facebook group, which is at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash GF Explorers. And until next time, happy eating.